Hi there, welcome to the Praying Christian Women podcast. I am Alana here with my friend and co-host, Jamie Hampton. We are thrilled you joined us for some discussions on prayer. So if you have been listening to the show, you know that sometimes we will do coffee break episodes where listeners can write in with some of their questions about prayer. And these are really fun. They're a fun way for us to get to know you guys and what's on your mind. And also just a really good way to lead into some super interesting discussions. So I'm really looking forward to today's episode. And let's open with a word of prayer. God, thank you so much for being able to be here together and just connect with our listeners in a more personal way. We just ask that you would give us wisdom and allow our ears to hear your voice and just guide our conversation and just be glorified through our talk today. We just pray your blessing on Kimberly who asked the question and just pray that you would um, be speaking to her through this as well. Amen. Amen. And if you guys have questions that you want to include, you can submit those to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And now let's dive in. Do you want to read us what Kimberly wrote in? Sure. Kimberly's question is, at the start of praying, is it Father God all the time or part of the time? When is it or when is it not Jesus? And is it Jesus Christ or is it Christ Jesus? So I think the big question is, how, who do we pray to when we pray? Yeah. We have a triune God that we worship, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, but who do we address? And is there, does it matter or does it not? So I think that's an excellent question. It's one I've thought about a lot, and, and I think it's a great question to talk about. For sure. I think it's kind of a two-part question. One is who we're praying to, whether that's mm-hmm. God the Father, Jesus the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and how do we address them? So I wanna, I'm going to take the easy way out and start with what I find is the easier question, which is how you address God. And I feel like, especially if you read through the Psalms, there are so many different ways that people address God throughout all of Scripture. You know, um, God, Lord, God Almighty, Father. I don't feel like the actual name or title that there's one right or wrong. So I feel like that's the easiest part of the question, whether it's Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ or Father God or God Almighty. I am, we all know that we're talking to the same God. And let's add to that that. Yes, there, there is the Trinity. There's God, the Father, God, the Son, God, the Holy Spirit, but God is God. <laughs> and so I feel like in practicality that this is probably going to be one of those more um, kind of cerebral questions where it's just sort of interesting to discuss, but maybe not, I don't want to say not practical, but do you get what I'm saying? Like, it's not going to make or break our prayers. Like if we say the wrong thing, if we say Jesus Christ, instead of Christ Jesus, or if we say, dear Jesus, instead of dear father, I don't think that that changes whether or not God hears us or decides to respond to our prayers. Right. I agree. And I, um, I love this kind of question and this kind of cerebral, like, let's dissect this. Let's look into, Mm -hmm. you know, the roles of each of role, you know, each member of the Trinity. And I do think that it's important to understand the Trinity and who each member is. And, and there are, biblical roles and examples, but I also think it could be a stumbling block. I just picture some of the Jewish leaders sitting around the temples discussing at nauseum, you know, these, mm-hmm. these questions and like coming up with just debate for debate's sake and missing the point. So if you're going to get frustrated by this in terms of like when we start talking about different roles of God and, and things like that. If that's overwhelming for you, then just ignore it and just pray because I think the connection is way more important than the semantics. Absolutely. And even though there are these different, um, I don't even want to say aspects of God's character because they're more distinct than that. You know, like there, it is a three part God, but it's all God, you know? So it, it still is, in my opinion, it still is praying to God. I feel like arguments can be made for praying to one part of the Trinity, you know, but I I also feel like it's almost like if a letter comes to Jamie or a letter comes to Mrs. Hampton or a letter comes to, 
you know, Mrs. So-and-so Hampton. Do you know what I mean? Like it, it's all you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Right. It's not because, you know, um, it's not blasphemous to address the Holy Spirit when you're praying because mm-hmm. the Holy Spirit is God. Right. And, and so it boils down to if you're asking, is it wrong to pray for, you know, to someone, you know, one member of the triune God over the others, I would say the short answer is no, there's, there's no wrong person to address, but I still do think it's important to know these three members of the Trinity through what the Bible says about them. And, and maybe we have a couple of scriptures that talk about different ways that people prayed. Um, so I don't know, we could get into some of those things. Well, the first one that comes to mind is the Lord's Prayer. When the mm-hmm. disciples come to Jesus and say, teach us to pray, and he starts with our Father who art in heaven. So I think even with all the discussion we've already had, if you were to hold a gun to my head and say, you only get to address one member of the Trinity in your prayers, who's it going to be? I'm probably going to say God the Father, because that's the example we see in Jesus, right? But that's also the example we see in Jesus because he doesn't pray to himself. <laughs> that doesn't right. mean that we can't pray to Jesus, you know, but I guess in my mind, because we do have the example, if you're the kind of person who really wants it to be black and white and be like, Jamie and Alana, just tell me what to do. You're not going to go wrong by praying to God, the father, because we see that in the Lord's prayer. And most of the time when Jesus teaches his disciples about prayer, it's in the context of praying to your father, you know, like the verse about the prayer closet, like when you pray, go into your room and pray to your father who is unseen. So I would say that probably if you just want to add up who is prayed to most in scripture out of each member of the Trinity, it probably would be God the father. And and that's the example that we've got. And that's personally, that's who I pray to. Um, I do like to um, I do like to speak his name in different ways. Like you were talking about, there's so many names of God. There's, you know, almighty God, there's Jehovah Jireh, you know, there's, um, God, the father, you know, different things, Abba. And I think that by praying those names and, or personalizing those roles in the way that we address him, for me, it really enhances my prayers and it personalizes those prayers for me to kind of, it's almost like a praise at the beginning of Mm -hmm. the prayer, like almighty God, I'm I'm praising him for being almighty God or loving father. I'm praising him for his love. And I, I think that that can be a really, I don't know, a way to enhance your prayers is by praying these, um, these names of God. For sure. I think so too. And another thing to remember when we're talking about the distinction between, you know, Jesus, the son, God, the father, I think if we're going to go back to just precedents set in the new Testament, we also have Jesus telling us to pray to the father in his name. Right. So I think that if you were to take that literally, the literal answer is we are praying to God, the father, and we are doing that through the name of Jesus, being cleansed by his blood, having his authority. So, you know, I guess my, I guess that just kind of reaffirms the go-to of praying to God the Father and just recognizing that you're doing that through Jesus the Son. Mm -hmm. And we also know that it's the Holy Spirit who helps us when we pray. You know, we kind of see all three working together. Yes. And there's one time that I saw in scripture that I could think of that there was a prayer to Jesus, but you could argue that it was just a conversation. And it was when Stephen was being stoned in mm-hmm. Acts seven fifty nine, And he said, and it said, okay, I don't think it says he prayed, but, but Stephen says, Lord Jesus receive my spirit. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that could be, you know, I guess that could be construed as a prayer or it could just oh, be sure. God, Jesus. And it was like, Jesus, Hey, what's up? You know, no, I, I absolutely would say that that's a prayer. <laughs> yeah. Know, this is in heaven by that time. Um, the same thing with Paul. You know, he, on the road to Damascus, has this encounter, says, who are you, Lord? And he says, I am Jesus. You know, like Paul is talking directly to Jesus. So I think, again, it's just mm-hmm. one of those, um, I don't want to be so flippant as to say like six of one, half a dozen of the other. No, <laughs> but I, don't think so. I think it emphasizes the fact that... Um, we, we have different examples in scripture and that that gives us 
freedom, you know, to, to not be, you know, totally a hundred percent dogmatic about it. You know, like it would, to me, it almost feels as if like, if my kids want something that they have to say mother, they can't say mom or mommy or Hey, you, or you know what I mean? Like, that's just mm-hmm. not really how those relationships work or, or with my husband. I can call him Scott. I can call him one of our pet names. I, I call him dad all the time. He's obviously not my dad, but he's, you know, in the home, like you end up calling your spouse, mom or dad, when the kids are around, mm-hmm. even when the kids aren't around, you know, Hey dad, um, that doesn't, that doesn't change the outcome of our conversation. Right. Well, I found this interesting quote from John Piper from Desiring God about praying to the Holy Spirit. He actually says, and frankly, my own soul says, if I grieve the Holy Spirit, which it says I do in Ephesians 4.30, I think I should say I am sorry to the Holy Spirit. (laughs) I mean, it is just strange if he is a person and I have grieved him that I would just ignore talking to him and go to the Father and say, I'm sorry, I grieved your spirit. Well, that is okay, but there's something profound in the Trinitarian reality of the personhood of the Son and the Spirit that we would treat them as persons. So that's an interesting outlook as well. Yeah. John Piper, no, that is, I think is pretty biblical and scriptural and grounded. And, um, you know, another thing about talking about praying to Jesus, there are so many people in the New Testament now, of course, they saw him physically in the body that he was in at the time, but, you know, Lord, increase my faith, Lord, heal right. me, Lord, have mercy right. on me. In my mind, those are prayers or the thief on the cross, you know, remember me when you come into your kingdom. In mm-hmm. my mind, those are all prayers. And those are obviously directed to Jesus being the son of God. Um, And Jesus being the son of God still took time out to pray to God, the father, you know, so Mm -hmm. I just see them all kind of working together. So (laughs) I feel like we have talked a ton about the issue, not really given Kimberly like a definitive answer, (laughs) but hopefully Kimberly, you're kind of seeing that there are, there's not one there's not only one way that we can address the Lord. Right. And if there's a question in your mind between whether if your prayer is being hindered by not being able to figure this out, just pray, just do it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, You know, and like I said, if you feel weird, like I, I can confess, like I would feel weird regularly, saying like, dear Holy Spirit or something that just Mm -hmm. doesn't, it could just be because the churches I've attended never do that. I don't know if it feels weird to you, then don't, you know, (laughs) like I, I don't feel like you need to like, it's all, it's all God. Um, So I think the things to keep in mind, you know, God is our father. We see that super clearly in the Lord's prayer and in the examples where Jesus is teaching his disciples how to pray. We're told many times in the New Testament that we are praying to God the Father through Jesus's name. And then we see the Holy Spirit being the one who really helps us in our prayers, helps us to know how to pray. Um, you know, and even right now, this is such a weird thought to wrap our minds around. But, it, you know, it says that Jesus himself is at the Father's right hand interceding for us. Mm-hmm. Like right now, Jesus is hanging out with God the Father praying for me. Like that's that's just mind boggling. <laughs> Well, in the spirit, it talks about the spirit intercedes with groans too deep for words. The spirit is interceding on our behalf. Kind of like I think of the Holy Spirit sometimes as our translator when we don't have the words, you know, he searches our hearts and draws out our prayer and transmits it to God in a way that, yeah, God, the father, it's, it's, confusing. (laughs) It is a confusing topic. And one that, like we said before, is kind of interesting if you want to get into sort of the theology about it. Mm -hmm. But on the practical side, um, I I really don't feel like this is something to spend a lot of time sweating over as Mm -hmm. if it's going to make or break your prayers. Amen. All right. So thank you again for your question. I hope that that was encouraging for you. We have our prayers for the unsaved next, right? Oh, Jamie just dropped something. I disappeared. <laughs> I dropped I'm glad my it mouse. Wasn't another, glad it wasn't another earthquake, right? Oh my goodness! Yeah, that it was. We're not done with earthquakes. earthquakes. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with earthquakes. That 
Well, yeah, I was going to say it would be it would be neat to have a small one on camera just, you know, just for fun, you know, and and for then they prayed and the place where they were standing was shaking. That's right. You're you're Paul, I'm Silas. Here we go. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, all right. Dropping my mouse made me lose my train of thought. I think it's time for prayers for the unsaved. Is, is that right? Yeah. Mhm. Mm Are all you right. ready for that? I'm ready. Awesome. This is actually one of our favorite segments of of the podcasts because this was just something that began as a passion for us personally and a challenge for us to pray for three to five people, maybe one to four, I don't know, one to three, one to three, let's start small. Just a few people that God um, has placed on your heart. And if you don't have them in mind, I would say go to God with your journal and just take a little time and ask God, or if you have tons of people on your list, maybe just ask him to narrow it down to a few so that during this time, you just have like one to three people in mind that you'd like to pray for who don't know the Lord and to commit that these people are, you're going to pray for them for the long haul until God removes that burden from you or until they're saved um, or both. So um, if you like these prayers, you can go to prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved, and you can actually get one prayer a day delivered to your inbox for 30 days. So you can go ahead and just pray daily all of these different prayers for these different aspects of the lives of people that are on your heart. So that's prayingchristianwomen.com slash unsaved. So let's pray. God, you are so good. You've shown me so much kindness, Lord. Please extend that kindness to my friend today. Teach them how good you are. Allow them to call on you. Without your help, my friend would stay lost in their sins. Please reach down and touch them today. Show them how loving you are. Draw them to you with your irresistible power and compassion. My friend is living in darkness, Lord, but you are the God of grace who calls us to your eternal glory. You call us out of darkness and into the light of your kingdom. Shine that light on my friend today and grant them your salvation. Amen. Amen. Well, again, thank you, Kimberly, for your question. If you're listening and have other questions, you can see we're not here to, uh, we throw out a lot of, hmm, interesting question. What do you think? So we're not here as the experts. We're just here because these questions just sort of help us know what kinds of things are going through your mind. And you can submit your questions to us at prayingchristianwomen.com slash questions. And we're glad you joined us. We will see you for our next episode.